welcome everybody to today's session about AI-based demand forecast. Now, let's look at the question why you should do demand forecasting with artificial intelligence. There are a number of reasons. Some of them are like obvious, like the first one, of course, the better you anticipate the future, the better you can run the company and the complexity issue, avoidance of over and under production. Of course, you can save costs with it, etc. But the really important ones from my point of view are like the second one, the effort one. If you look at how companies do demand forecasting today, it's usually by letting salespeople fill out Excel sheets about what they anticipate as the demand will be and then aggregating that. So you take away a lot of sales power from your own organization and you get a result and I will not comment how good or not good this result will be. Another really important point of view is almost the last one, the insights. You can identify the drivers of your demand by looking at the results of the machine learning algorithm. So they will tell you how important which part of the data you feed is for the specific prediction. And the last one is the one I actually like most. One of the experiences we have made with all our customers up to now is that as soon as we can show that there is a significant improvement on the end of the value chain, which is out to your retailers and to your customers, we see immediately the demand increasing from all parts across the value chain, whether it's production that wants to better optimize production management, whether it's procurement that better wants to optimize the purchasing of specific parts or materials, or whether it's inventory that wants to optimize the whole inventory process and the cost of that. So there is a lot of reasons why you should do that. And I would like to go into the first example where this second effect has shown a big impact. We have a company which is a heavy equipment manufacturer, one of the biggest ones in the world. They produce things like wheel loaders, excavators, etc. So the big machines you need for constructing the buildings. And their process was actually, as I described before, they asked the salespeople across the world in all the different regions to provide their sales forecast, their demand forecast, and ended up with a result that was less than 80% accuracy on the forecasts. So just to make the point, all the numbers you see on this slide and also the next one, they are not from us. They are from presentations those companies have given at a Microsoft event recently. And since I know the numbers, I know it was far below 80%. It was actually even less than 70% on accuracy. And they had a pretty high manual effort to create those monthly sales forecasts. Actually, the biggest issue we found out when we talked to them is that most of the time frame they had reserved for their forecasting planning was spent on chasing salespeople to finally provide numbers and fill them into an Excel sheet. Now, with our solution implemented, that has completely changed and they now get automatic sales forecasts on a monthly basis for 12 months. They also get it for 18 months, but they also get it on a five year horizon integrating all sorts of different data, internal and external data. And the customer itself says that they get an accuracy of 95% for those months on a monthly basis for those forecasts. And what they did, they changed the process. Rather than chasing salespeople, they get those forecasts automatically created on a monthly basis and send those out to the regional sales managers and spend the whole time in the forecast cycle to discuss the content and adjust it and make sure that everyone is aligned on this forecast. So the big benefit they see from having such a system implemented is that they get an automatic sales forecast in the right time frame when they need it. It's much faster and more precise than anything they had before. And it already helps them to better plan their production. It helps them better plan their inventory. I mean, if you look at those things, they're pretty big. And if you want to have one, let's say in three months in Japan, because you want to sell it, you better start building it now and putting it onto a ship so that it gets to Japan in time. Another example is Spar, which is a big retail chain in Europe. They had a very interesting situation that triggered to do a project with us. 
if you look at this picture on the left side here, they change the layout of their stores so that the first thing you see when you come into the door is the beautiful colors of all the fruits and vegetables. And they thought they would increase the customer satisfaction by doing that. And it was a good idea, but it turned out to be the wrong decision because people were quite satisfied when they came into the markets sometime in the afternoon and half the shelves were empty or almost empty. So that was a big problem for them. And the overall main goal was to get the customer satisfaction back up or make it even better. And with our solution implemented, we do a weekly forecast for several million combinations of every single article, every single market, every single day. And it's in the meantime, almost 1,600 markets. So it's millions of combinations. And the result is a proposal for the disposition, which amount of which article should be delivered to which market on which day. And the interesting thing is not only did they get their main objective to increase the customer satisfaction again, there was another goal or another effect that actually wasn't even declared as one of the goals, which is in the headline here. They've already saved 15% of the waste by using our uh, solution. And we talk about double digit million euros here on just what they saved. So the return on investment on this specific case is not calculated in months or years, but it's in days or maximum weeks. There's also a reference story on that, and we will send you the slides later on, and you have a link in here. It's a Microsoft story on the Microsoft servers so that you can look at what they did, what they say about it, and how it works. So if you look at the overall value chain, I mentioned before that normally when we talk about demand forecasting, we are usually talking about the right side here. So when it goes to your retailer or when it goes out to the customer. The thing is that our solution can support the whole process of your value chain, not only the demand, it can also help you optimize your sales and distribution. It can help you with your inventory optimization. It can help you with optimizing your production planning, your procurement, and it can help you optimize your logistics and transports. And actually, one of the really interesting things, we have seen that over the last few months, Initially, the most important thing was to look on the right side of the value chain to get a better sales planning. And over the last few months, we have seen a dramatically increased demand for inventory optimization because the interest rates have been going up. And especially after the COVID situation over the last two years, many companies have like built up their inventories to avoid difficult supply chains. And now they realize it really costs them a lot of money to keep this way and they want to optimize it. So no matter where you look for optimizations, you can get it by using our solutions. Our solution runs Microsoft Azure platform. It's in the cloud and it uses all the machine learning algorithms and everything which is available for you in Azure ML will be automatically used for you. Now, how does that whole thing work? Let's look at the example from before, the heavy equipment manufacturer. As an example here, you have sales data. That's pretty easy. Most companies have that readily available because you just have to go to your ERP system and look what article have you sold to which customer in which time period. So that's all data which is available for the past. In addition, you usually have pipeline data. You have a CRM and you have your project pipeline and that data also goes to the future. With that data set alone, you could already start some trainings for AI algorithms to give you a prediction for the future. The result you will get will be okay. It will not be super, but you will probably get a pretty okay result if your data is okay because the algorithms will already find some correlations and some patterns. They will probably find out what's the correlation between your pipeline and your actual sales, what's the delay, and also what's your win-loss ratio in which region for which product, etc. But in order to get a really good forecast, you usually have to add additional data. So 
In the case for the heavy equipment manufacturer, what we did, we added data from the so-called CECE database. That's an industry database where all equipment manufacturers provide, not all, but most of them provide their sales data. And if you provide your sales data to this database, you can get aggregated data for regions and product segments back from them. So that was available. We added that and it gave us quite a nice improvement on the forecast. In addition, we added some macroeconomic data like GDP, for instance, and you have that for the past, but you can also have it for the future because there are predictions available of like GDP, for instance, from different institutions. At the end, we added building permits, and that actually was the biggest boost to the result. Building permits are available for almost all markets, publicly available. And of course, we didn't know that, but our customer knew it, and they said, why don't we try that? So we tried it, and it gave us a really good result. And the result is what you saw before on the slide, where the customer says they have an accuracy on their forecast on a monthly basis of 95%, which is probably more than anyone gets with manual forecasts. So this is the way it works. And I think that adding additional data and differentiating between what is known in the future and what is not known in the future, like the CEC database can only deliver past results. Your internal ERP can only deliver past data, but like GDP or in the case of a supermarket chain, you might have the weather and there are weather forecasts, so you can have future data for that. You can add your own product promotions or your competitors' product promotions, which are probably also known, and that will give you a good result because our time is almost over. Basically, what you have seen now is a solution that has some industry-specific templates already built in. It's got a user-friendly UI and re-emphasized that our main objective was to bring AI to the business user and not to the data scientists, because many of the things you've seen today, you can do without our solution as well. Just go to the Asia machine learning portal and define an experiment. The problem is in some cases you have to be able to program, you have to understand what the JSON is, et cetera, et cetera. So we try to make it as simple as possible, but still giving the user the power. It's not only cloud ready, it's running in the cloud completely. It's scalable. That's one of the reasons why we've chosen those two examples. On the one side, a manufacturing customer with uh, quite big machinery, quite expensive machinery, where you don't sell millions of them every day. And you look at the monthly time horizon for maybe 12 months, maybe 18 months. And on the other side, a retail customer that has thousands of articles in thousands of stores every day, and we plan on a weekly basis. So it can really scale up based on your requirements. It's using state-of-the-art artificial intelligence. As I said before, whenever Microsoft adds a new algorithm to Asia machine learning, it's automatically available and it will automatically be used and usable for you. And that all leads to some very good accuracies in your forecast results. The solution is in the marketplace. So if you go to the Asia marketplace, you can immediately get it. I mentioned I would also give you an outlook on how you could get to an AI-driven demand forecast. Usually we get confronted with uncertainty when we talk to customers because they don't really know if their data is in the right shape for uh, demand forecasting and for machine learning algorithms. They don't know if their business is the right one, which can be predicted. So what we offer is a predictability check, and I'll get into that on the next slide. So we usually do that first, and then when the results are okay, the next thing is the tool setup. That is actually no problem at all. That's basically automatically you go to the marketplace and click on get, and it will auto deploy in your tenant. And that's also an important part of the whole thing. It's not a software as a service. It's a managed application. So it will not run on our tenant, not run on anyone else's tenant. All the data and everything will stay in your tenant and you control who has access or not, and no access. Then there's the data sourcing. Of course, we have to find out what kind of data you need. And the last part is then the process integration. As soon as a business case or a use case is verified that it works and it works 
well enough for you that you like to have it like every week or every month, you should do the process integration. That means like automatically delivering the data to our solution, starting a training and providing the forecast results, maybe in Power BI reports or however you would like to continue using them. Now, let me go back to this predictability check. Basically, what we offer is that you can send us your data, like some past sales data, whatever the time amount is that makes sense. We'll discuss with you whether we should integrate additional internal or external data like CRM, like macroeconomic data, et cetera, into the forecast model. Then we will analyze the trainings we do with your data and do a review meeting with you to discuss if that is good for you, if that's okay, if you want to proceed or not. The whole thing as a package, it takes eight to 12 days to do the whole thing. And the reason why it's not a fixed number of days is because it really depends on the data you provide, how well aligned and how well it fits to the process. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Bye bye.